Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning. If I could get everyone to please find a seat and stop talking. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's true, but you, you should be able to use it at certain times. Okay, so yeah, can I get those doors closed and I get everybody to come in and have a seat? Yeah, we've got a few announcements and we'd like to get through those. Not that uh, after I give those announcements, you will immediately forget what I just said, but we got to give it the best shot, right? So come on in, everybody come on in and have a seat. Find a seat. Ushers, ushers may need to move you over, depending on how many people are coming in here, but uh, let's go ahead and take a few minutes. Uh, welcome to First Baptist Church, California City. You're not here by accident. God brought you here for a special purpose, and so let's see what that purpose is. Uh, let's go get those announcements. All right, so council meeting today, uh, 3.30. If you are on a committee or you're part of church... Uh, I don't know. Ministry. Church ministry, that's right. Please be here at 3.30 so we can go over that uh, um, calendar and find out uh, you know, who's overlapping on a, who, who's el other schedule. Uh, so we have a uh, prayer meeting at, uh, on Wednesday at 3, wait a minute, 5.30? So, 6.30, right? Prayer meeting? Oh, prayer team meeting. All right, there we go. Thank you, Pastor. So prayer team meeting. If you're on the prayer team, uh, 5.30 meeting here. Is that right? Here at the church? Uh, 6.30 business meeting on the 15th. 6.30 business meeting on the 15th. So that means, of course, uh, if you're part of the, in the youth, we are not going to have a meeting that Wednesday night. Uh, Next Sunday, we're going to have a potluck after the 1045 service. Ooh. So, I know, I know, and, and, and of course we know that it's Super Bowl Sunday too, but what's more important, right? Okay, uh, I'll let your conscience be your guide on that. All right, so we are going to, on the 25th, have a uh, CPR first aid training at 9 o'clock, uh, Let's see, is, uh, oh, uh, yeah, could you come out real quick? Just, just, and the key word is quick. Uh, let us know a little bit about that. Um, CPR class, February 25th, it's a Saturday, 9 a.m. Lunch will be provided by the hospitality committee. She doesn't know that, she's gonna find that out. Um, and if you are on one of the ministry teams with the kids, please, it's highly encouraged um, that you get this under your belt. And if you're on any other ministry teams, obviously you're welcome. Um, but that's going to be a priority. So the kids, if you work with the kids, you're a priority, and then we'll filter after that. Um, the list is in the lobby, and it's filling up. Sign up. Okay, thank you, Jessica. That was awesome. Uh, I'm sorry, what's that? Well, you know, this wasn't question and answer, but. <laughs> the 18th. The 18th. Saturday. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, he's talking about something else. Okay. So, um, was that the, everything on that list? Okay, well, so just to let you know, February 18th, we're having a men's breakfast. At seven o'clock, not seven thirty. I think I think on here it says. Okay. Men's breakfast, seven o'clock, the eighteenth. Got that, men? All right. All right. All right. So real quick, uh, I would like for us to uh, think about yesterday, Saturday morning. We had a few things going on. We had evangelism, and. Uh, from what I understand, that went really well, but we also had a clothing our neighbors in. Um, so, Jerry, back there, uh, could you give us a little report about what happened?
yeah, please don't please clean out your garage or, and or attic because we, we became the middle person to just throw it straight into the dumpster. So yes, clothes that you would wear, clean and preferably folded, because that's what we do. We, we fold them, and so anyway. Um, oh yeah, so I don't know, are we gonna be talking, do we have a thing for power to change? Do we have a, okay, so next, Lottie Moon offering. Um, I believe the end of this month, is that right, Jackie, is the last, the end of this month, we are uh, still collecting for the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Uh, we have not reached our goal yet. Is that? Oh, okay, so hopefully we're gonna meet that goal of uh, $2,750. Uh, there's a little envelope in front of your seat, hopefully. Uh, designate it for the Lottie Moon Christi Christmas offering, but do not make it out to Lottie Moon. Okay, next. Ladies Retreat, Camp Ironwood. Okay, before I do anything, from what I understand, there's some questions about who's going and when, and there's possibly a second Ladies Retreat in October. So where, where are we going with that? So there's a bunch of us that can't go in April, which doesn't mean that you shouldn't go in April if you can go. Um, it's still available. October is always a second time that they do the ladies retreat. I typically don't go in October because it's too close to Christmas for me, but there is rumor going around that we are scheduling a trip in October. I don't know anything about that, but I am not the only person that can do these retreats either. So. If you want to go in October, you should go in October. If you want to go in April, you should go in April. But the April trip, you guys will need to sign up if you want to go because it's going to need to be coordinated as soon as possible. That's all I know. Thank you. So uh, that means that we're going to have to get a coordinator for that. If you would like to coordinate that, I guess you could probably talk to Shelly about that so that we can get somebody coordinating that. Um, so. Next. All right, so uh, does anybody know that we're going to be having uh, a crusade coming to the Antelope Valley in October? It's called Power to Change, and it's going to be uh, extremely important for us as a church because there are a lot of things that we're going to have to do prior to that. Pastor, do you want to talk about that real quick? So this slide here is actually for the prayer leading up to that. Uh, when the ladies get back from Camp Ironwood on Saturday, on Monday, we're going to go back down to Camp Ironwood. Anybody that's want to come down there and pray with us, it's 40 hours of prayer. Uh, the cost is $159. That takes care of your room and your food uh, for the three days. Uh, it'll be Monday night, all day Tuesday and then Wednesday morning, and then we'd be coming home. I know it's during the week. Uh, it's a bit of a commitment. Uh, me and my bride are going to be going. Uh, Pastor Lemons is the one that put this on. He's really uh, passionate about the prayer that's needed for this crusade that's coming up. Uh, there'll be another slide here and a couple more slides that talk specifically about the crusade in October. We still need lots of volunteers for the crusade. Uh, we're talking 400 counselors, uh, ushers, and security, and all those good things that go along with it, and there are other things that, that could be involved. So if you are interested in being part of building the kingdom of God through this crusade, reaching out to the unchurched, as it says so on our bulletin, uh, in the Antelope Valley, uh, that would be a good time for us. And, I, and I've actually heard people say, well, it's down in Lancaster. Well, guess what happens when we have an event down at Jed Hawk Stadium? People from California City are going to get in their car and they're going to drive down to Jet Hawk Stadium. And there's a, a, a high likelihood that there are going to be people from California City that are going to come down out of that stand. They're going to be looking for a church home. And, and we're going to be here to provide it for them. Thank you, Pastor. So, again, a lot of things leading up to that are going to be happening. So, uh, can we get another slide? 
All right, so, see Shelly White. Twists and turns, who knows what this is about. VBS, so uh, we've got a sign up sheet, I believe, is that right? Do we have that sign up sheet yet? So we don't have that sign up sheet, so forget I said that. Okay, great. So if you filled out a BBS uh, uh, volunteer sheet that, that was put out there, I believe it was last week and the week before, um, I guess it didn't get put into this one, but uh, be looking for those. Uh, 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 did, did Lisa, were you trying to say something? Game boards? Board games, okay. All right, so they're for decorations. So if you have some board games that you wanna donate, please bring them. All right, so next slide. All right, so this again, talking about that crusade, uh, it's gonna be something that we really uh, wanna get behind because this, these are lives, these are souls that need to be uh, turned to God and, and away from this world. So. Uh, there are signups in the foyer. Please sign up. Next. Okay, so now we're at the birthday portion of it. All right, wait. We're, they're not up there. Okay, so don't worry, don't worry. Uh, I know. I guess it didn't save. You got to save your work. <laughs> anyway, so. Isaiah, are you here today? Did I see Isaiah? He, he's, oh, I, I heard you guys singing happy birthday to him. Vel McKinney. I know. She was here this morning, too, or she, 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 she took off? Okay. Uh, Linda Waldheim. Are you here? Where? Oh, there you are. I was just, ta I was just talking to you. Uh, Helen Witzke. Oh, way back there. Look at that. She's got both hands up. And... Pam DeMumbrum. Pam, are you here? Hopefully, if you're not here, you're watching on. And the twins, Heather and Summer Green. You guys want to stand up and tell us how old you are? She doesn't care. 14. All right. Man, I can't even remember what it was like being 14, man. Okay, it's been so long. So do we have any other birthdays that we did not uh, get to mention? Okay, great. So let's go ahead and give them a rousing happy birthday. Are you guys ready to sing? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Okay, what about uh, anniversaries? Do we have some anniversaries up there? Oh! All right, so uh, we know Dan and Eva were, they were here this morning? Or not here, they weren't here. Hopefully you guys are watching. And then Brian and Rose Linda, where are they at? Oh, way back there. So I know Rose Linda knows. Brian, do you, do you remember how long you guys have been married? Eight whole years. She was a child bride. All right. <laughs> okay, so do we have any more uh, anniversaries that are happening this week that we did not uh, put up there that you'd like to be recognized? Okay, well, then I guess it is time to worship. If you guys can stand and worship with us, if you're able to, welcome to the house of the Lord. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. First Corinthians said, death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the victories, for the times, Lord, that you never failed us. The times that we looked away, God, and you were still there. Hallelujah. For the Holy Spirit, God, who leads us and counsels us. We give you glory for who you are. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Nisi, who reigns in victory. Jehovah Shalom, our Prince of Peace. Amen. Lord, we worship you for who you are. Praise the Lord.
voice to the Lord. Tell him we love you, Jesus. Because of who you are, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a part of the program where besides the worship team and the pastor, now is our participation in giving to the Lord. Not that he needs it, but in our obedience unto him in giving. Let's all bow for a word of prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give back what you have given to us, knowing that you're a God that does not need but because of the obedience in your command in giving, Father God. You said in your word, it's more blessed to give than to receive. In the position, Luke chapter 6, 38, it says, Give, and it shall be given. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and runneth over into the bosom. It's return 30, 60, and 100 fold, Father God. We thank you for the opportunity to give, Father God. Not to give grudgingly, but you said in your word, you love a cheerful giver. With all these things in Jesus' mighty, precious name, we say amen, amen, amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Can I get everybody to help me get the teen kids to come on up here? Wow, this is awesome. This is awesome. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. You know, I'm talking to the adults about the Holy Spirit. Does anybody know what the Holy Spirit is? What's the Holy Spirit? Okay. The Holy Spirit is actually part of God. It's one of the three personalities of God. Um, now, Jesus made a promise to his disciples. Do you know who the disciples are? It's the people that follow Jesus, right? And, and I'm hoping that all of you guys will follow Jesus if you're not already. Because uh, it's kind of important. You know, this world is full of struggles. This week's been a struggle for me and my family. <clears throat> but Jesus promises that He's overcome the world. So when we have a relationship with Jesus, guess what power we get? We get the power to overcome the world. And the Holy Spirit helps us to uh, receive that power. And it comes from Jesus himself. You guys think you need that in your life? I know you do. 
and I pray that you have it. Now, I know that Alyssa's back there just biting up a bit, wanting to teach you guys, so we're going to stand up and we'll close in prayer. Yeah, we got the, the springboard hand over here. <laughs> And I'm going to hold this. We don't have to straighten it out, okay? Thank you, Jeff. I pray for you to go in Christ's name. <coughs> and I pray that you bless this church. And um, everybody related to me to go in Christ's name. Thank you, Jesus. So, so let's walk back there to Alyssa at the door. You know, one of my favorite things to do is talk to the kids. Um, it's so important. Uh, don't be sitting down just yet. <laughs> I, I, I don't want you to get too comfortable. Uh, actually, go find somebody and, and tell them, I want more of Jesus. Find somebody. You find somebody. Tell them, I want more of Jesus. Now, now, I'm telling you to say this, but you should really want more of Jesus, right? Come on now. I do, I do. Love you, brother. All right, anybody that wants more of Jesus, please be seated. Oh, there's some people just don't want some more. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Let me start by thanking everybody. Um, if you're not aware of it, my stepmother passed this week. Uh, so it's been a rough week for the family. It's actually been a joyful week for me, though. Uh, a joyful week in the knowing that she's no longer without sight, that she's no longer bedridden, that she no longer has the depression and the anxious nervousness, uh, that she is at home uh, with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's mine, too. <laughs> and, and we'll talk about that a little bit today. <clears throat> you know, we, we started into a series last week about the Holy Spirit. You know, last week we learned uh, about the God less spoken of, and we, we learned that the humility of God is, is really resonated through the Holy Spirit. He's, he's with us. He's present. And, and yet he doesn't glorify himself. He glorifies Jesus and the Father which is what we're to do also as a disciple of Christ. We, we learn that he's a part of our salvation, that he's a part of our sanctification, and that he secures us for the future. These are things that should be uh, empowering to us, things that we should be able to draw from. When I say, I want more of Jesus, well, what should I be doing? I should be drawing closer to the Holy Spirit, right? He's our counselor. Today in John 16, we're going to start looking at his names and, and the nature of him. We okay back there? Uh oh. We, looks like we might be short on some of the, the communication, so I'll try to embellish a little bit. Y you know, when we think about we, when we need help, truly Jesus has sent us help. We're never alone in this. You, this, this thing that I'm talking about today, this subject that I'm talking about today, uh, his name, the counselor, uh, it's the night before Jesus is getting ready to be betrayed. And, and there's turmoil and everything else going on. And, and Jesus 
uh, turns to his disciples that have gathered in the upper room and he gives them instructions on how they are going to live in his physical absence. Something that we as disciples of Christ have always done ever since we came to Jesus. They're, they're about to learn how to do that. Because you see, for three years now, they've been walking with Jesus himself. They've been walking with the man that they could turn to everything for. And, and now he's getting ready to go home to be with Dad. He's going to be on the throne. He's going to be preparing a place for you and for me to come to. You, you know, he's always resolved everything in their lives up until this time. And, and now the circumstances are that physical Jesus are no, no longer going to be with them. And, and he wants to reassure them. He's been the center of their lives. They gave up everything for him. And now he's getting ready to leave. He, he wants them to know how they can, can keep on keeping on without him. Walking with him. If you are a believer, you know Jesus is real. If you're a believer, you know that what he has accomplished for you is real. Even though you don't physically see him. You can't physically touch him. You know he's real. And what he's done for you. And that in itself is a blessing. And I say it's a blessing because Jesus himself said it was. In John 20 verse 29 it says, Jesus said, because you have seen me, talking to his disciples, you have believed. But he says, those who believe without seeing are blessed. We have a power uh, that the disciples did not have at that time. They received it later, but we've received it now. Jesus said, we are blessed with faith that believes without seeing. We need that, don't we? With this in mind, I would like to take 60 seconds now. And I, You know, I ask this before every message, and mostly it's for me, because I do, I, I rely heavily upon the Holy Spirit to be able to speak to you. But you should rely heavily upon the Holy Spirit to receive God's message also. So when I ask you to take 60 seconds to clear your mind, I want you to get rid of all the distractions of this world for this moment of teaching, this moment of hearing God's word. So give me 60 seconds. Join me in prayer. Father, I come to you and I thank you. I thank you for uh, this life, this peace that you have given me, Lord, in the midst of uh, what the world would describe as tragedy. I see the beauty in it, Lord. I see the beauty of mortal becoming immortal. I see the beauty of uh, death and destruction being removed. I, I see the beauty of you working in our lives and changing and transforming other people. Father, as we dive into your word today, help us to engage. Help us to activate and be a part of everything that you're doing. Help us to chase after the will of you in our lives for everything that we uh, want and desire should be in you. And uh, Father, I lift up those that are here today for the first time, and I, I pray that uh, they might feel the love that is here for them. Uh, Father, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Speaking of this, we don't say it enough, um, but if you are here for the first time or if you want to communicate with the church, there's these little cards in the seat in 
front of you or right behind you. Uh, and, and it is. It's an information card. And if you fill that information out, we'll know your birthday and your anniversaries and stuff. We'll be able to celebrate that with you. There's also a place here for putting prayer requests uh, and, and, and general communication with us. If you want to know more about what's going on here, there's, there's questions that you can ask so that we know that, that we're to engage with you and how we're to engage with you, just for a, 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 an understanding. So we are. We're talking about the third person of the Trinity. He's called the Holy Spirit because, well, he's a spirit. He's not physical, although he will manifest himself physically, as we'll look at next week. Whenever he is referenced, we understand him as a person. He's not something or it. He is a person. Whenever we read about him, he's always referenced as a person. As in John 14, verse 15 through 18, if you love me, talking to us, Jesus is, you will keep my commands. Does anybody here love Jesus? Oh, we're not real active this morning, are we? Is the, has the coffee machine stopped working out there? Did, did the donuts run out? Oh, my goodness. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commands, and I will ask the Father. He's going to ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the Spirit of truth. He. The world is unable to receive him, him, because it doesn't see him or know him, but you do know him. Because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. Let me go down a rabbit trail like I did this morning. Last night I had dinner with my stepsister. And she had a glorious vision in her dream the night before being in the presence of Jesus. And I asked her to describe what he looked like. And she said, well, I didn't see him, but I could feel the glory. I could feel the joy and everything else of being with him. You see, there's been some strife and stuff uh, with her here recently. And she asked some Christian sisters to pray with her. And, and as a result of that, she really had a great night's sleep and a glorious vision in her dreams. And I asked her, I said, so do you know how you receive that? You know, so many Christians don't even pay attention to the Holy Spirit. See, see, you're a disciple of Christ when you say, I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And, it, and, and Jesus promises us when we do that, that he will send the counselor to be with me and in me. Not, not for here and there, but always. And see, when you're going through struggles and strife and what have you, who should you be turning to? You should be turning to the power that's already inside of you because you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit is someone for you to know. It's not a feeling or something like that. It is actually someone for you to know. The Holy Spirit is just like a person. He has thoughts, he has feelings, and he makes choices, as we'll discover as we study his nature more and more. A, a lot of Christians want to call on the Holy Spirit's power without ever relating to the someone who he is. They just kind of, yeah, he's there when an emergency pops up, hey, you need to come fix this. But that's not the way we're called to live as disciples. If you want his presence and power, but do not recognize the someone he is, you're going to miss whom he is for your entire life. There are Christians walking through this world who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but never employ the gift that they've been given. 
Jesus is telling the disciples that he's going to the Father and sending them someone who will fill this role, the role that he has been filling in their lives. As Jesus walked with the disciples, they had his counsel, the help of Jesus in all their struggles in life. They could turn to him for absolutely everything. He was there. He was, he was there all in all. As long as Jesus was with them, they had what they needed. He helped them in their fears as we witness in Mark chapter 4, verses 39 through 40. The, the storm was overtaking the boat, and he's, he's snoozing up in the bow. You know, when the chaos of life is happening all around us, the peace of the Lord should be in us. And it says, he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Silence! Be still! The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then he said to them, Why are you fearful? Do you still have no faith? Blessed are those who believe without seeing. Blessed are those that believe in the Holy Spirit working in their life without actually seeing a physical Jesus. In Matthew 14, we read about the failures that we have in life and how Jesus helped them in their failures. We see uh, again, Jesus is out walking on the water this time. A and Peter's wanting more of Jesus in his life. And Jesus says, come. And climbing out of the boat, Peter started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. You want more Jesus in your life? Anybody here want more of Jesus in their life? But here's what happens to us. But when he saw the strength of the wind, when he, when he saw the world around him, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! As I'm sure I would have too. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand, caught hold of him, and said to him, oh, You of little faith, why did you doubt? You, you were walking on the right path. You're stepping towards me on water. And you let this world distract you. Now, it is time for Jesus to return to the Father. And in his love for his disciples, he lets us know that, that we will not be without help. We're not going to be orphans out here. In fact, we are given the same help and counsel we would have received if he was right here in our very presence. Notice how he says, I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. I'm coming to you in the form of the Holy Spirit who's going to give you me. The disciples are thinking, Jesus, you're going to leave us alone. We gave up everything. We've been walking with you for three years now. How are we going to make it now? But he assures them that he still will be with them through the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is the way we get Jesus. It's the way that we get the mind of Jesus. It's the way that we speak like Jesus. It's the way that we treat others like Jesus. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is with the Father in heaven, preparing a place for you and for me, for our future, which is secure. In verse 17, it says, He is the Spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive Him because it doesn't see Him or know Him. But you do know him because he remains with you and in you. The Holy Spirit is our connection to the essence of Jesus himself. This verse is an incredible promise to us. It really is. He, he's not the only way, excuse me. He's not only always with you, but he remains in you. When you got up this morning, guess where he was? He was in you and with you. When you got in the car to come here, 
to the worship service. He was in you and with you. When you stood up to worship with God, who was worshiping with you? The Holy Spirit was worshiping with you. Did he get a good witness from you? Were you singing to him? Were you singing to the glory of Jesus? It's important because with this understanding, we know as a disciple of Christ, when somebody asks us about our hope, that we are never, never, ever alone. He's always with us. Acts chapter 9 verse 31 says, So the church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace. We should have peace in our church. Being built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, and it increased in number. Encouragement of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what drives us into our peace, our presence of peace as a church. The Holy Spirit encourages our walk. He gives us what Jesus would give us if Jesus was physically with us. He is our access to our Lord and Savior. If you remember the study on the Beatitudes, one of the things we get when we get Jesus is His defense. Now, I don't know about you, I'm a man, so I, I say, well, I'll take care of myself. Uh, ain't nobody going to mess with me. And normally when I do that, I make a mess of things. Uh, we should allow Jesus to be our defense in this world. Uh, because the enemy that we battle is much stronger than we are in our physical abilities. But he has nothing over our Lord and Savior and the Holy Spirit and the one that takes us over. He's like having someone to guide you in all the decisions in life that need to be made. You made a lot of decisions already this morning, haven't you? You decided what clothes you was going to put on. You decided whether or not you was going to take a bath or not. You, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm in the presence with you. I, I know. You, 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 you decided if you was going to, how you was going to get here. You chose the road, route that you was going to take. Let me ask you, in any of those decisions, uh, did you ask it to the Holy Spirit? Hmm. In Romans 8, 26 through 27, in the same way, the Spirit also joins to help in our weakness. Because we do not know what to pray for, as we should, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with unspoken groanings. And He who searches the heart knows the Spirit's mindset because He intercedes for the saints. Who's the saints? Who's the saints? Do I have any saints in the room with me today? According to the will of God. You see, we should not make decisions outside of the Holy Spirit. You never can tell what I might end up wearing if I'm making these decisions on my own. It could be get, get pretty ugly, right? Even when we can't figure out the direction that we want to go in life in all these different situations, when, when, when we cannot figure out what we should be praying for, the Spirit still has our back. Even when we decide, hey, I'm going to go do this, I'm going to go watch that, I'm going to go eat this, cinnamon roll, uh, the Spirit still has my back. You see, we should understand the function of the Holy Spirit. He is there to guide us in every step that we take, not just in uh, emergency situations. Uh, to complete our relationship with Christ, we need the Holy Spirit. We understand the function of the Holy Spirit. He's to bring Christ to us. He's to develop Christ in us. He's to help us to reflect Christ into this world. The question is, how do I experience the reality of the Holy Spirit and not just the knowledge of what He does? 
first, I must develop a relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. You, you know, it's not something that we just walk through life and, yeah, he's there, he's doing his thing. No, we need to have a personal, intimate relationship with him. I, I can't just call upon the power of the Holy Spirit. It, it says he remains with me. It's not, hey, every, every now and then I'll, I'll come get you when I want you. No, he lives here. He controls here. He, he determines what goes up here and the decisions that I make. He wants to be in everything that I do. If I'm out playing golf, he wants to be there. If I choose to go talk to somebody, he wants to be there. Galatians 5, 16 through 18 says, I say then, walk by the Spirit. Who's the Spirit? The Holy Spirit, right? I say then, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Why do we struggle so much? It's because of our own heart's desires. We got nobody to blame but ourselves. I say then, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is against the Spirit, and the Spirit desires what is against the flesh. There are, these are opposed to each other, so that you don't do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Let me say that again. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Does anybody need to be led by the Spirit? Do you, do you know where you're going under the law? Do, do you know where you're going under the law? We all have a sin nature. We have all fallen short. And if we are living under the law, we've got a problem. We're going to spend eternity in hell. We need the blood of Christ over us. And, and, and He brings us our salvation through the Holy Spirit. He brings us our sanctification. He makes us holy through the Holy Spirit. He secures us for our future and our eternity in heaven. He's the one that's developing us, making us the new creation. It says that means I am going somewhere. To walk in the Spirit means I'm going somewhere. You, you know, when you walk, you, 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 you're not sitting down. You, you're not watching TV. You're not, you're not kicked back. There, there, there's action in walking, isn't there? And, and if I'm going to walk, that means I've, I, I've made a decision. I've I, I got to have some faith, don't I? You know, I've got to have faith that this old back of mine, when I stand up, it's going to support this body. <laughs> and, and that this leg right here with that knee is going to be able to carry the weight when I take that step. But I don't just take a step. See, walk is a continuous action. I'm, I'm going somewhere. Where am I going? If you're walking in the Spirit, you're going to God's will. You're going to God's will for your life. And that takes a decision. It takes faith. put our faith in so many things in life that aren't of God. We put our faith in our house. We put our faith in our automobile and our 401ks. We put our faith in, our, in that credit card. Yes, bless you. We put our faith in people. And we wonder why we cannot discern the Holy Spirit working in our lives. If you're going to walk in the Spirit, you're going to communicate with Him all the time through all your uh, mundane tasks and through all the extremely exciting ones and through all the depressing times. You're going to constantly be talking to him. You're going to be in a relationship with him. You're going to, as Andrew St. Nicholas told us here last month, you're going to listen, you're going to hear, and you're going to obey. Because he's going to guide you down this path, this very narrow road that we're on, right? Right, Kia, where are you at? There, you, there she is. She, she sings that song so beautiful. And it's true, it is a narrow road that we are choosing. 
Another thing we need to walk with the Holy Spirit is to not be ashamed to be identified as Jesus Christ's disciple. In John chapter 15, verse 26 through 27, we read, When the Counselor comes, the one I will send to you from the Father. Th think of who's saying this. this Well, I'm not quite Paul. No people's falling out of the windows yet. <laughs> but, but yeah, it, would, it is nice to wear out some batteries. <clears throat> In John 15, 26 through 27, says, When the Counselor comes, the one I send to you from the Father, Jesus is making a promise here, the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, He will testify about me. He will testify about Jesus. Are you testifying about Jesus? If you're not testifying about Jesus, there's no Holy Spirit in you. He will testify about me. You also will testify because you have been, you have been with me from the beginning. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. We are going to testify about Jesus when the Holy Spirit is inside of us. John 16, verse 13 and 14 says, When the Spirit of truth comes, when you receive the Holy Spirit, he will guide you into all truth. He's going to guide you into all truth. How many of you just read the Bible and leave out the Holy Spirit? I can tell you right now, Satan knows this Bible very well. He can quote it to you. <clears throat> but Satan don't have the Holy Spirit guiding him like we do. So these words mean more to us. These are living words. That's why when you read it over and over and over again, it always says something different to you depending on where you are in your maturity in Christ. It says, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own. The humility of God the Holy Spirit, but he will speak whatever he hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Mm. If you're not willing to testify to Jesus Christ working in your life, you are keeping the Holy Spirit from working in your life. You are, as we said last week, you are stifling the Spirit. You're keeping him from doing what he's supposed to be doing in your life, that you're supposed to be allowing him to do in your life. He is a gentleman. He's not going to force you to do things. This is a choice that you're supposed to be making, that I'm supposed to be making. It is the purpose of the Holy Spirit to bring you Jesus and to glorify him in your life. It's not enough to identify yourself as a Christian, as so many people do. You must testify to the work of the Holy Spirit and what He is doing in your life so that you reflect the life of Christ. As a disciple, you do exactly what the Master does. And if Jesus is your Master, that means that you should walk, talk, and act just like Jesus. If you do not, you keep the Holy Spirit from working in your life. Matthew 10, verse 32 through 33. Therefore, everyone who will acknowledge me before men, Jesus talking here, therefore, everyone who will acknowledge me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But there's a flip side to that, and he says, but whoever denies me before men, whoever says, ah, you know, I, I probably should say something about Jesus to this circumstance, but, you know, I, I don't want to feel awkward in front of my peers, you know. They, they don't really know I'm a Christian. You know, I want to keep that kind of on the, on the down low. I don't want them to necessarily understand my relationship with Jesus. I want to put it out there for everybody else. 
He says, for that person, but whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father in heaven. We witnessed a dear sister testify to Jesus working in her life just last week. Dana gave us a beautiful testimony about how she has been delivered through so many things in her life. And then she gave glory to Jesus. We do that in our baptisms. But we should do that in our everyday walk. We should do that in our relationship. We should do that with our children. We should do that with our grandchildren. We should do that with our co-workers, our friends, and our enemies. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 2 through 6, in case you don't think you have it in you uh, to accomplish this, to, to live a life that reflects the glory of Jesus, it says, This is how you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit who confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Ah, but there's a battle going on here, and it says, But every spirit who does not confess Jesus is not from God. But every spirit who does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. You have heard that he is coming, and he is already here in the world now. Verse 4, you are from God, little children. Little children. That's us. And you have conquered them. Because the one who is in you, the Holy Spirit that you have received, is greater than the one who is in the world. The battle is already won for us. They are from the world. Therefore, what they say is from the world. And the world listens to them. We are from God. Anyone who knows God listens to us. Anyone who is not from God does not listen to us. From this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of deception. This is where the battle is. The, the battles for the truth of God or the deception of Satan. Who's more powerful? Who, who has the victory? Do, do we live like that? Do we live every moment of our life like we have the victory? Satan doesn't want you to walk in the Spirit. He doesn't want you to acknowledge the Holy Spirit in your life. He, he knows that if he can get you to refrain from acknowledging Jesus working in your life through the Holy Spirit, Satan can make the power of the Spirit disappear in your life, and he does it. The authority of the Spirit will disappear in your life because you'll be fighting against what he came to do to bring the glory to Jesus. You'll be grieving the Holy Spirit. You'll be making the Holy Spirit emotional. He's very sensitive, as we'll be talking about. He has feelings. And when we choose to not acknowledge Him in our lives, we're really choosing to sit on Satan's sideline and help him have the victory for the moment. So we need to have a relationship with Jesus. We also need to function in the truth of God's Word to develop this relationship with the Holy Spirit. We're, we're talking about the spirit of truth here. And God's Word is the truth. Jesus told us why He came to earth. It was to testify to the truth and the truth being his father. In John 14, 25 through 26, it says, I have spoken these things to you while I remain with you, Jesus said. But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, the Father will send him in my name. Who's going to teach you? The Holy Spirit will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. It's not your pastor up here teaching you. It's the Holy Spirit working in you, receiving the Word of God that teaches you. 
John 15, 26, when the counselor comes, the one I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about who? Jesus Christ himself, that's the one that's working in us. John 16, 13, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. He gives us the mind of Christ. He helps us make that transformation, and he guides us down the path that we should be on. If you are living a life of lies, it's a life of lies. What did Satan say to Eve? Did he really say you would die if you eat of that fruit? You will surely not die. But God said that we would die if we ate of that fruit. What's a lie? It's anything outside the truth of God. Anything that doesn't line up with the Bible is a lie. And we're being told lies all the time. And where do they come from? John 8, 44, you are the father, you, you are your father, the devil. He's talking to the church. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he has not stood in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he speaks his own nature because he is a liar and the father of lies. There's so many Christians that live a lie. They don't want to really come to Jesus. They, they want the status. They want to be known as a Christian. But, but they've got this mask up. They're not, they're not being real with themselves or with others. You, you see, when you come into church, you, do, you should expect to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. It, it's all here. If, we, if, if I was just able to unpack your thoughts over the last 24 hours and display it here on, a, on the screen, you would find a great deal of shame and, and disgust. That includes my thoughts. You know, it's always a battle. And Satan's battling for your thoughts. He really is. But who's Jesus? John 14, verse 6. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if Jesus isn't here physically, he sent the Holy Spirit to bring us there. Through him. He brings us the mind of Christ. We cannot lie our way into a relationship with Jesus. We have to give him the, the cold, hard facts, which he already knows. It must be authentic. He's called the spirit of truth. And will only be for the person of truth. One of the reasons our prayers are not answered is because they're full of lies. We, we pray so much outside of the will of God. We pray for our own personal desires and wants. They're not authentic to who we are and the situations that we're in. We, we want to pretend everything's okay. That we got our act together. Jesus did something very important for us. In John 16, 7, it says, Nevertheless, I'm telling you the truth. It is for your benefit that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the counselor will not come to you. If I go, I will send him to you. You can have an authentic, real relationship with Jesus Christ because Jesus has gifted us the Holy Spirit. 
You can have an authentic, real relationship with Jesus Christ because the Holy Spirit, when you allow him to, works in your thoughts, works in your mind, uh, guides your steps and your actions, guides your speech, and, and you can actually reflect Jesus into a broken world. You know, I, the, the truth is people should be drawn to you. If people are repelled by you, you, you need to work on something. They, they should be drawn to you. I, I, I mean, there are people right now <clears throat> that are going to a gym over here and working themselves out, hurting themselves, just because of the Holy Spirit, Spirit working in that over here. <laughs> the, 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 these ladies are coming in Because they're drawn to a man that loves on them and wants something better for them. Now, I tell you, I didn't realize how much God was changing me until other people witnessed it to me. Until they started coming up and they wanted to drink from what I had. And what I have is the Holy Spirit. He, he's the one that really... Uh, he 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 helps control this pitiful thing up here I call my brain. And, and he does some amazing things to us. And I know he's doing amazing things to a lot of yours. But I also know there's some out there that you're not giving them much attention. He's not the priority in your life. He doesn't play much in your decision making. And, and as a result, you, you stifle the spirit. we get the worship team to come on up. By a show of hands, how many of you thought about the Holy Spirit today? By a show of hands, how many of you thought about the Holy Spirit before we came into worship? Ah, survival kit. Ah. Got some good things going on there, Donna. So yesterday we took the Holy Spirit working in us, and there was a group that came out uh, from the church and went over to evangelize. Um, had one lady come to me and say that she got rebuked and it hurt now the truth is Jesus said when you are persecuted for doing what I require you are blessed you should be happy I'm not sure I get rebuked enough Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that reveals what your word says to us. We thank you for giving us a mind and a heart that can be transformed. We thank you for the gift that you give us. Father, we've got so much more to do, and as we recognize the battle raging around us,
thank you for how you're going to work that out and how we get to witness to each other as it goes. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Go to your mission field in Jesus' name. to welcome to the house of the Lord. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. 